So students, the next three tool selection tools that we're going to be using are the lasso tool, the magnetic lasso tool, and the polygonal lasso tool. The starting with the lasso tool, and they're all nested within this one uh, black triangle in the bottom right corner, uh, the lasso tool will let you select organic shapes that are loose and hand-drawn. So if you want to draw a flowery kind of shape, you can, or you can do a heart. These are all kind of uh, hand-drawn and very loose. They're easy to add to by holding down shift. If you are in this new selection mode, it'll if you hold down shift, it'll automatically switch over to the add to selection. So shift might add another part to that, or if you want to subtract from those selections you've made, let's say you made an error on this top bit, you can hold down alt and drag an area around the part you want mit to be missing. Go back around to your beginning point and that'll remove it from the selection. So alt is to subtract and shift is to add. Just like the other selection tools, you have an opportunity to feather the edge of that selection. Right now that's a sharp kind of treatment. You've just cut a section out of here. But if we had feathered that edge, we would create a soft edge selection. And that can be helpful in a variety of situations, certainly not in this one. So let's say you wanted to uh, make a selection with that tool. Here's a nice green space. Maybe I want to change the color and make it like the grass look like it's kind of dead. And I'll use my freeform lasso tool to do as much a good job around the edge of this as I can. Not very good. There's spots that are off and I can add that to the selection tool by holding on shift and trying to get closer getting a bit more detail and then alt to subtract I got too much there back around to my beginning point and oops I have my feather still on so you need to be careful about when you've got your feather on when you don't have it on and uh, this is just turning into a mess of a selection well a better tool to use would be the magnetic lasso tool so if we zoom out a bit the magnetic lasso tool will be kind of like a, a sticky lasso tool that stays stuck to high contrast areas in your uh, on your image. So because this is darker green than this lighter beige, when I start going around this shape with my magnetic lasso tool, despite my finger kind of my hand wavering with the mouse, it's still going to try to stay locked to that green. So let me show you what it, what I mean by that. It kind of wraps itself around, even though I go up and down below the below that green area tries to stay stuck to it. That can be a really handy tool. You still want to stay close to what you're selecting and if you're finding that there's lots of little nooks and crannies to your uh, to what it is that you're trying to select like maybe the edges of these trees you might want to increase the frequency up here. So once you've got that selected you could enhance it adjust color, adjust hue saturation let's say it's an example and you could Make it look like it's a little, little bit earlier on in uh, in the fall or something like that, where it's starting to to die down that the greenness of the grass. You can press OK. Now, if you do click, you can double click to get out of your selection. And if you are selecting around one of these trees, you might consider using the freeform, just regular lasso tool to get around this so that you're not fussing too much with your magnetic lasso tool. And that's your selection. You can paste that somewhere else, control V to paste, if you, if you control X to cut it, or if you don't want to cut it, you just want to copy it, control C to copy, and Zoom out for a second, and you can paste that layer one. Using the move tool, you'll realize that you've actually got a few more, and you can duplicate those easily 
by pressing Control and Alt at the same time and dragging from that layer, creating a little repetition for yourself. Now it'll be clear that you're borrowing the same pixels from that same earlier layer, but at least you're creating a neat little feeling of rhythm and repetition that might create a sense of unity in the piece. So the freeform lasso tool was great for things like trees or weird shapes that don't have a lot of contrast. The magnetic lasso tool was great for freeform shapes that do have a lot of contrast. And the polygonal lasso tool is great for big blocky shapes because it goes in straight lines. So anything that's uh, straightly geometric, triangles, rectangles, that kind of thing. So let's ch say we wanted to adjust the color of City Hall. You could easily do so. S remember your starting point. Click once with the polygonal lasso tool and extend the line towards where your next point is going to be. Sometimes it will glitch on you and, uh, and stop the selection, but start again. Go up to the next point that you want to do a straight edge at, the next point, and I know that I want to go down to the words the right of this image, uh, but if I use my, my my polygonal lasso tool to jump my way over, see it just glitched. Um, if I let me demonstrate that again. Let's say I wanted to make my way over here. Sometimes the screen jumps over uncomfortably, and you have to jump back and forth. It feels kind of silly. So the best thing to do is hold down the space bar as you as you need to move to activate that hand tool and click where you need to click at a point like this sometimes you might do a few rapid clicks to get around a curve so that it doesn't look too square and I'm just gonna do this quick I'm gonna hold down space bar while I click and drag myself over so that I'm not Um, going to jump all over the place. Now from this I can change the levels. That's a classic uh, action on a photograph. Control L. Oh, I'm on the wrong layer. Go down to background layer. Control L on my keyboard to open up levels and with this I can change the dark pixels to become even darker, the white pixels, light pixels to be even lighter and maybe the midtones to be adjusted as well. Okay, so that's another adjustment that you can do. Another example of using this polygonal lasso tool is if you have a uh, if you want to make kind of like a jagged selection shape like start here one two three you can make a just neat kind of patterns with with that and back to your beginning point double click if you can't find it and then even with your brush tool on a new layer, create a new layer at the bottom here. Just take a few big swipes through there, and that could add a really cool effect if you change the layer style of layer two. Let's deselect that before we begin. Control D to deselect. Layer style we can change from normal to dissolve to now I'm just pressing down on the on the keypad on the down arrow, cycling through darken multiply that looks cool color burn so you can do neat effects with uh, by just limiting the uh, modified pixels with the polygonal lasso tool there is one more important principle when selecting that that you should know about is kind of a tricky way of working but let's say for instance that I wanted to darken everything in this image except for this tower one way that I could do it is to make a giant selection around everything. Let's do that. Just a giant, enormous selection. And then I can take the polygonal lasso tool, let's say in this case, zoom in on this tower and subtract it from the selection. Might go up to there, up to there, up to there, up to there, and back to my beginning point. And I think I might want to add a bit more to that selection. Let's add this roof. Watch what happens here. I thought I was going to be adding, but it turns out I was actually subtracting from the part that I wanted. 
So it's a little counterintuitive to work from that, that perspective. In fact, what I would need to do is subtract this further from the selection, even though I'm adding to the selection that I intend to. So if that's not confusing, then you're doing great. So let's just zoom out for a second. And it's true that I can now darken everything on this layer in this background area by going to enhance and adjust lighting and maybe shadows and highlights, um, light and shadows. I can take everything, I can darken highlights, I can make everything kind of gloomy. Or I could, I could just simply take a, a brush that's black change the opacity down to 50 or something like that, increase the size of the brush to as big as I can go, and just wash the whole thing in darkness. So that was one pass. I can make a second pass to make it even darker. <laughs> My trees are still appearing too because they're in layers above the background layer that I'm showing you. So that's one way to do it. Um, what I think is more comfortable for everybody is to just make the selection of the thing that you want to have uh, shown clearly or left alone you can call it back to your beginning point and go up to select and press inverse or control shift I and that instead of let me just show you what so before we had uh, this layer selected Control Z to undo, but when we inverse it, now this isn't the layer that's selected anymore, everything else is. So inverse is when you take a selection and you kind of flip it or reverse it so that the area that um, you had originally selected is becomes the opposite of, of what is selected. So that can be helpful. I know sometimes it can be also be confusing. So to recap, we learned about the lasso tools. The lasso tool is great for doing freeform work. Um, it's convenient because it kind of works like you're drawing. However, sometimes the magnetic lasso tool is great for doing high contrast different shapes, such as this rooftop. Sometimes you'll see a jump and you need to be careful about that. And there's also a convenient tool for doing long straight shapes called the polygonal lasso tool. And once you use those, you can inverse the selection by going up to select inverse. Or you can refine your edge and change the feather. Or if you're intelligent, like I know you are, you can change the feather beforehand knowing that you want to make a soft edge selection click 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 and you'll notice that that can be uh, blurry edged instead of sharp edged so that's it practice